Joshua Cheptegei has just achieved something utterly incredible. Not only does this achievement cement Joshua Cheptegei as the best middle-distance athlete in the world at the moment, it also secures his place as one of the best 10,000-meter runners in history. So keep watching as we're about to delve right into the action. Joshua Cheptegei is a name synonymous with middle-distance running dominance. With his outstanding 5,000-meter and 10,000-meter world records, solidifying his place as one of the best middle-distance runners in history. After taking home the gold medal in the 10,000 meters back-to-back -back at the two previous world championship events, Joshua Cheptegei would obviously come into the 10,000 meter final this year as one of the favorites to be crowned world champion. However, the competition this year was certainly not to be taken for granted, with the likes of Beruhu Aragawi and Selamun Borega set to stand in the way of a third consecutive victory for Cheptegei. Aragawi has certainly proved he has got what it takes to defeat Cheptegei this season after going head-to-head -head with Cheptegei over 5,000 meters earlier on this season at the Lausanne Diamond League and coming out on top with a world-leading time of 12.40.45. Aragawi has also set the world-leading time over 10,000 meters this season at the Ethiopian 10,000-meter trials, where he walked away in first place with a time of 26.50.66. With so many great athletes in this field, it was anybody's guess as to who would come away victorious. But one thing was guaranteed, this race was going to be thrilling. As the race went off, the Ugandan athlete Joel Ayeko immediately shot to the front of the race, producing a gap between himself and the rest of the field, which eventually grew to 35 meters, while covering his first lap in a staggering 62.86 seconds. If Ayeko were to maintain this pace, it would set him pretty much on par with Cheptegei's 10,000-meter world record, which would be a huge stretch for Ayeko, even more so when running in these extremely warm conditions. At first, I thought this may have been a tactic by the Ugandan team to set a quick pace from the start in order to benefit Cheptegei. However, in reality, I think the nerves may have got to Ayeko, which is understandable when performing on the biggest of stages. As Ayeko passed through the 3-kilometer mark in 8.37.30, he had been caught by the large chasing pack behind him, which had been sat at a much more consistent pace of approximately 70 seconds per lap. As the race progressed, the lead pack passed through the 5-kilometer mark in 14.21.75, projecting them for a finishing time of 28.42.5, which would be very comfortable for many of the athletes in this race. It was at this point that Bernard Kibet took to the front of the race and surged a few times, possibly in an effort to wake up a few of the other athletes in the race and encourage them to pick up the pace. As a result, the pack began to draw out, and for the first time in the race, athletes were starting to drop off the leading group. After the surges of Bernard Kibet, a few of the pre-race favorites started to take their turns at the front, including Selamun Barega and Berahu Aragawi, and this in turn elevated the pace, causing the lead group to continue decreasing in numbers. As the athletes passed through the 8-kilometer mark in 22.41.26, leading into the final five laps of the competition, the intensity of the race was definitely increasing. With Aragawi leading from the front, and consistently passing through laps in around 65 seconds, a remarkable increase from the earlier pace. While it's certainly not ideal for Aragawi to lead out the entire race from 6,800 meters onwards, especially considering his blistering finishing kick, he has already proved this season that he has the ability to lead out the race and still have a kick left at the end. As shown at the Lausanne Diamond League, where he led out the entire race and still had enough left to beat Joshua Cheptegei in a sprint finish. With just three laps to go, it became clear that many of the athletes were starting to take a closer order at the front of the race, with the likes of Joshua Cheptegei and Mohamed Ahmed sitting ominously on the shoulder of Aragawi. It felt like either one of them could make a move at any moment. And it was with 500 meters to go that Joshua Cheptegei eventually took his chance, surging past Berahu Aragawi and raising the crowd to their feet. As Cheptegei glided down the back straight, he had the likes of Aragawi, Borega, and Ebenyo for company. However, it all came down to the last 100 meters where Joshua Cheptegei was able to power away from Borega and Ebenyo to his third consecutive gold medal in the 10,000 meters in a time of 27.51.42. 
while Abeno just pulled past the tiring Borrega to clinch second place, and Borrega crossed the line in third. With a stunning 53.46 second final lap, nobody could withstand the incredible speed and strength of Joshua Cheptegei, and with the 5,000-meter race still to come later on this week, I can't wait to see how he will get on against many of the shorter-distance athletes, possibly including the likes of Jakob Ingebrigtsen, as the start list is yet to be released at the time of recording. But I want to know what you think. Can Joshua Cheptegei demonstrate his incredible strength again over 5,000 meters later on this week, resulting in a historic World Championships double? Or will the blistering speed of some of the shorter distance runners be too much to handle? Let me know your predictions in the comments down below.